Hi everyone, it's Lynn and today we are going to talk about the basic tools that you should have in your arsenal when you paper craft. Now, as I look around, there's a lot of tools that we own, so I'm going to try to break it down and just give you some examples of the best ways or different ways that maybe you can use a tool that you already own, or maybe find out that there's a tool out there that you need to have um, that will help you with your paper crafting. So let's get started. So you can see I have a nice array of basic tools here. So I'm going to start with the most simplistic thing, in my opinion, to work with stamping. Now, if you're a stamper, you need to use something to clean your stamps. And this is the Stamp Chamois. And you can also use the Spritz Cleaner. The Spritz Cleaner is just in a spray bottle. And the chamois is something that you get wet. There's two in there. And I'm just going to show you how they look when they're wet and been lovingly used. You can wash them, but I just basically rinse them out in the sink and you can add a little soap to them. And then you just store them in the Ziploc bag that they come in, okay? But these are great also for cleaning off your craft mat, your space, anything maybe with shimmer brushes that you're splattering things on. So you can use these just beyond the stamps. Here is well. another basic tool. This is the, uh, I wanna say it's the Right and Rub Eraser. I love this eraser because it really does lift off the glue off of your paper when you make a mistake. So basically you're taking your paper and let's just say you accidentally put some glue down and you realize you're on the wrong side. Oh, come on. We know we all have done this trick. So you take the right and rub eraser and it magically disappears. So I love this. This is a really good tool to have in your system. Okay, so let's also talk about scissors. We sell um, micro tip scissor as well as the non um, stick or Teflon coated. This is the one I recommend because I seem to be cutting, you know, um, we have our foam tape like this and this will cut right through and not leave anything on here. So I love that. I can cut through glue or something that's sticky and it works well. These are fine too, but micro tip being that they're really, really fine tipped and they work like a charm. They do have a cover so that you don't stab yourself. Um, but another great tip is if you have undo, what you do is you put a little bit on a cotton swab Put it on a paper towel. And anytime you have sticker, uh, your scissors are a little sticky, just rub this to clean off that stickiness and it really makes a difference. So definitely try that with undo. So many of the tools you'll find in our core catalog on page 91. And I'm actually gonna go over number 13, which is the paper crafting tool. It's double-ended, thin, flexible spatula and pointed flexible tip built-in soft grip, used for lifting and placing stickers, die cuts, and more. So yes, you can definitely use it to um, place things. So sometimes you might have a sticker, a really small sticker, and this would be easy enough to use either end. I would actually use this end, stick it on there, and now you can so move you can it around. use either side of that to move the stickers. The other thing that I have found this to work really well on, let me show you, is um, sometimes you stick down a piece of paper and you realize, oh, it, or a sticker, and you realize it's in the wrong place. So you can actually use this to help lift it off the paper. So you just slide it. I, well, this is what I do. I just slide it across. So I'm just showing you that it does lift it off if you needed to do something like that. I've used it on occasion when I realized I've made a mistake in placement. Now let's talk about our stylus. You know, you've if you've gone back to one of the videos that I did recently, I showed you how the stylus works. It can definitely add lines. So I'll show you later when I get the mat out, how that works and in your paper trimmer, you can use it. And the piercer, the piercer is great. Poker, piercer. It's great to sometimes even move little gems. You can definitely do that and pick it up and move your gems. Or you can 
just have it for when you're thin cutting and you have some really intricate cuts and you just need to poke a few holes. We used to use this a lot with brads and things like that. So it's just a good tool to have because you never know when you need it. Now tweezers, I absolutely love tweezers because it really makes a difference in moving things around just like a letter. Maybe you have really small letters and you want to place this on your paper so you can easily lift it up and then use this to place it on your paper wherever you want or your card, whatever it is that you're making. So I love tweezers. I actually have two pair of tweezers because I use them all the time. And this is also a tool that I do use to move around my bitty bling. So I like to push it down and then I can pick it up and place it exactly where I want. So I always have two because I'm always looking for it when I need it and never can find it. It just makes it easier that way. You know about the bone folder, right? The bone folder is just great for helping you get a crisp uh, fold, whether it's on a card or we're doing the triangles. Go back to one of my cutting hacks if you're not sure what I'm talking about on how to get that 12 by 12 uh, paper cut into a 12 inch triangle. And the bone folder really helps give you a nice crisp fold. So that's a really good thing to have. An X-Acto knife. Now you'd be really careful with this. Definitely want to keep the cover on it, but that X-Acto knife is great for cutting those triangles that I've shown you with um, a ruler, but sometimes you just need to cut some things out or slit something to stick it behind. So that's what's good to have in your arsenal too. One of our newest tools this year is the pickup tool. And basically you just use a um, pencil sharpener to sharpen it and it works like a charm. You know how we have a lot of these little gems, loose gems, and we want to pick them up? That's how easy it is. It just You just stab it and it picks up the one you're looking to get. Right on the end. And that makes it easy, so easy to just use that tool to pick up the gems. So you get a two pack of these. You might want to share one with a friend or put one in your toolkit and one in your office. This way you always have one wherever you go. Another tool that I wanted to talk to you about has to do with water brushes. Now the water brushes actually have a barrel here that you put water in and there's two points. There's a finer point and a medium point. And you can squeeze water out and color. So you can definitely um, pump an ink pad and lift color right off of the lid and get a nice little wash. When you drag it, you notice it comes clean. So now I can go on to a different color. So you just drag it. You can always squeeze water out of the barrel, have a paper towel handy, just to make sure you get rid of any excess water or color. You can also use a water brush to take color right off of a watercolor have a pencil. a lot more color and wetness. So isn't that pretty cool? So those are ways to use your water brushes. And I like it because you can use this with so many um, things that you have already and just add a nice watercolor touch to your projects. Another tool that I really love to show you how to use is... Um, you can definitely use your anti-static pouch. We use this for our shaker cards, but you can order you also use it to desensitize a sticker. So what do I mean by that? Well, when you have a sticker, and let's say we wanna pop this up on a layout or a card, we're gonna take um, a couple of pop-ups. I'm just gonna put that in the middle for now. And you see how sticky that is, but we don't want that to stick to the card. So you can actually use an anti-static pouch, which has powder in here and it's not sticky. Here it's sticky and here it's not. So that's another way of uh, using this tool if you have it on hand. Now, many of my girls know I do this all the time, but I am actually have a container of you can use cornstarch or baby powder, and it works the same way where we rub it right on here. 
But if you have one of these, they work really great and it desensitizes the sticker. So now you could stick it down and it's not going, this part will not stick to anything. Especially for scrapbooking, if you're covering up part of a photo, this works really great. Now I'd like to go over some of the bigger tools and crafting items that are basics in my opinion. One of the things that many of you use or may not know about is Fisker's mini trimmer. This is great for cutting photos. It just has this arm um, and it cuts four by six photos easily. So that's something to think about if you want to make you that know, investment. I love my paper trimmer by Fisker's that's the rail. I definitely enjoy using that. And this also comes with a scorer. There's a black piece that goes in here. Go back to my original video for cutting hacks or the basics, and you'll see how I've used this and I teach you how to use your trimmer for sure. You definitely want rulers. Rulers are so important, especially to give you the measurements that you need when we're paper crafting. Sometimes you just need to know exactly where something's being placed so that you can place it accurately and not have to worry about it being crooked or anything like that. Now, before I talked about the stylus. So the stylus is something you can actually put in here if you don't own the trimmer with the stylus. And I'm gonna move that down and I can actually use the ball and the cutting line. And now you can see I've made my indentation or line. And a lot of times I've done this on a 12 by 12 page just to give it a little extra border. And if you can just do it at the eighth line and get a double, it does look really cool. And then if you're doing it on our cardstock, that's white toned, uh, has a white toned core. And you turn this over and you sand it, it's really a cool look. But isn't that a pretty border that you can get on your paper? Just with this tool and this tool. The Versamat, in my opinion, is the best tool that we can have, especially because it's a self healing craft mat, which means I can use my X-Acto knife and my ruler in order to cut those triangles that I've talked to you about in one of the other videos. You should check it out if you haven't. So you can see it's self-healing, so you will not feel or see those lines from cutting, and I love that. But it's also great for measuring. When we tell you to measure something and put it three inches down from the top, you'll know that that's three inches, right? Nine, three from 12 is nine. And that is where you want to line it up on that piece of paper that you have covering this here. So you'll have your nine line right on the outside to see that. But you can also use this to help you if you need to, or this way if you needed something to help guide you where it's two inches in, you can run it right along the edge. Now the Versamat flips over and is now um, a microfiber perfect for stamping images. You have your block, you have your stamp, you ink it up, you put your paper on top and you stamp right here. I always do scrap paper first, so I practice first on scrap to make sure my stamp is seasoned, has enough ink, I know the right pressure. I get the feel of the stamp first and then I use my good paper on top of the Versamat in order to really get an excellent impression. It works really well. Now, another thing you could possibly do is use your Versamat, and I'll go this way, also with the stylus. So let's try it. So let's just say I wanted to add a few more lines, and because it's, a, it's on a foam surface, I'm just gonna see if I can get two here so you can see it. It works as well, so you can see that is another way that you can use the stylus if you need to do some small pieces and you have your ruler and stylus handy and you don't want to whip out your paper trimmer. Let's talk about our all-purpose mat. First of all, this is the really smooth side and then this side here gets a little sticky. And we use this quite a bit for messy projects. We can use it with texture paste, our palette knives, 
our foam brushes. You can even use a sponge dauber. Um, and then, and also to do stencils. So here you can see I have the peacock feathers and I've used this tool. And I'm just gonna grab this piece of paper to show you that when you use the stencil, and maybe I want my lines to go this way. Well, we'll try a different line. And I'm just gonna do it right along here. You can put washi tape on top or some kind of tape there if you're worried about catching an edge, but you can see how cool that works. Sometimes you can see I have a little bit of line right here from the oxide ink. So you could just take your chamois and wipe that, and then you just wash your stencil with soap and water. Now, we've also mixed texture paste. So this is nice and thick. So you can see here, and you can actually mix a little bit of texture paste. I'm just gonna do a little bit here. You wanna close your texture paste right up again, nice and tight, make sure it's on. And you can also mix it with a little bit of your oxide ink by just putting some right here on the craft mat and using your craft knives to mix the color. So that's what we did here. So basically, I'll take this and I'll take my stencil and I'm not gonna worry about being perfectly in the lines because I'm normally working with a bigger stencil. But if you add more uh, texture paste, you'll get a lighter color. So it depends on the color that you want. And then of course, when you're doing this project, right? If you make your texture paste thick, it'll just dry thicker. If you want it thin, you just make it thin. And then you could just scrape it like this if you want it thin. And that will dry and you'll have a nice, um, great little imprint that adds texture. So when I have something like this, I'm going to use my paper towel to clean off my craft mat and maybe use a little bit of water to also clean it off, but you can see it works great. So we use that a lot for this kind of project, as well as splattering or adding um, watercolor paint. And sometimes, and that's what I wanted to show you before, if I take this, um, we'll just use our ink, regular ink, because most of you have regular ink. I'm gonna put some ink right there and I can also, I believe I can also do this with my marker. So let's see if they both come out. My brushes. Yep, so you can see, you can definitely get color that way. And I can actually add a little bit of water to this. And look how beautiful that is. What a great ombre look. So the craft mat has a lot of uses. The water brush has a lot of uses. And then you can also do this just with your inks. How cool is that, right? And then as far as cleaning it, I'm just going to squeeze it into the paper towel and that will be all you need to do. So water brushes are definitely a must have in, in your crafting arsenal. Another great trick that I love with the craft mat is I actually cut it into four pieces, right? So if you're interested in one of these, they're $7.50 or actually $8 shipped to you for one quarter. And I use this a lot because guess what? My stickers will stick on here. So sometimes we're pulling them off of a project and we're not sure where we're gonna use them so we can put that on here. And what that does gives us the option to pull it off and use it. So sometimes we're cutting real thin strips of paper or we have a thin cut that has some holes in it and really needs to be glued down. And I love using my craft mat and I love using the close to my heart adhesive 
because it actually sticks, does not stick to the craft mat. And you can see there's very few glue in the holes that you can see there. Sometimes you have that extra glue that sticks around, but this really does a great job. So this is two of my favorite tools to go together is the craft mat, as well as this close to my heart adhesive, especially to do thin strips, like an eighth of an inch strip, a half inch, a quarter inch. When we're adding those little border pieces, the craft mat works great for catching all that extra adhesive. 